Oh my gosh, it's time for Ninja Steel. I was supposed to watch it on Saturday, but I skipped Saturday. I went to the water park and, well, I kind of was stupid. I thought we were going to catacombs, but we didn't. And I got a lot of Ninja Steel. So I saw it today on Sunday, Ninja Steel. All right. So, yeah, this is episode 11, and I forgot. It's, I think it was Poisonous Ranger or some kind of crap. Well, anyways, yes, we are back with a Ninja Steel episode, and, well, we got a freaking treat. I still need to do a video on Dragon Ball Z, no, Dragon Ball Super, where Goku actually does narration, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, he did it for that one episode for episode 30. I know this is Ninja Steel, but I'm just saying... Brody did the same thing. Brody actually gave us a narration and actually caught us up to where we got in episode one to now, where he's like, I was looking for my brother and all that stuff. And I was like, I found my brother. Yay. And we get started at, <clears throat> well, I said at school, it wasn't at school. I'm not sure. Is that junkyard place actually behind a school? If so, damn, <laughs> I don't think so. So they were actually at the junkyard place and Aiden tells the story of what happened to him. So of course he told him, Oh, well dad, yeah, dad told me to hide the freaking ninja steel. And well, I actually peeked out the window and I watched him turn into a ranger, saw the whole entire fight and well, dad disappeared. And so again, he hide the ninja steel, made sure he left that note. So you guys know that, well, Brody knew where he could find it. And if you can hear that, Tokyo's near. <laughs> well, anyways, yeah, so he hit the ninja steel and then he decided to become a freaking, um, what was it called? Oh my gosh. Oh, I forgot what it was called, but yeah, he jumped on a train and got far away. So he wrote the trains. Or at least he rode a train and got off and we have no idea what city or where he went. Would have been a nice nod if they would have said, oh yeah, and I went to Amber Beach. <gasps> oh my gosh, you just now connected it to Dino Charge. Oh my gosh, but they didn't do it. Just simple words of, I went to Amber Beach, but they didn't do it. I don't think, but anyways, let's continue on. Let's continue on. So he went on a, oh yeah, I said he went on the train. And then Aiden actually has a red power star, but it was actually Brody's. They didn't show he getting it and didn't show him giving it back to Brody. So that was kind of a little bit weird. And then all of a sudden Mick, who didn't get to have anything to say in a few episodes ago, he actually now get to say something and he's being truly protective saying, oh yeah, um, no, 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 no. He shouldn't go and see the base. Yeah, Aiden don't get to see the base. He don't get to see the prison. No. And he's like, oh, but you can't fight him. You can't actually spar with him. And I was like, hmm, the Gold Ranger's missing, but not really. I guess I just missed him. So they're all in their ninja geese except for, of course, Aiden. And apparently when they do the whole duplicate tactic or substitute they call it ninja scarecrow move whatever then eventually we got aiden versus levi or levi versus aiden and well <laughs> i would have kind of blame Haley because Haley was like oh good job levi and well aiden wanted to show him some of his moves and he went hardcore taking down levi and it was like whoa damn and then Aiden wants, yeah, apparently Aiden wants to show off, apparently, that's what they were saying, and then, well, Brody, after Aiden left, Brody was like, hey, give him a break, I mean, chances are, this is the many times before he actually got to show his moves or even spar, it's been a long time, I mean, he couldn't just go to make a dojo for himself or even go to a dojo school, so, this is the best he got, even though it would have been kind of cool if he actually did. And he did actually create a dojo for ninjas and that would actually help. That would have been pretty cool, but okay, fine. Forget it. And she's like, yeah, never mind. So we now go to school with the baking class. They're doing chocolate sculptures. Sadly, I did never did home ec, so I have no idea if they actually really do that or what. But anyways, Haley and... Levi are doing bad. They had no idea how to actually stabilize the chocolate. And then we get to Victor and Monty, of course. In this episode, weirdly enough, I think Monty sounds pretty weird. Like weird as in seductive or inappropriate for children weird. 
I don't know. He just sounded pretty weird. And there was like some dialogue. You can get some innuendo on that. And I was like, wait, did they just put glue inside of chocolate? Did you mix glue with chocolate? I don't think that's even edible. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't think that's edible. That's they were trying to cheat, of course. But dude, that that's not edible. You're going to poison the kids. So they tried and well, Vader got covered in chocolate. And this was like at the time where the, she was like, oh, it's lunchtime. So they tried doing it and there was holes. Victor gets covered in chocolate. The glue is super fast because he got stuck in seconds or a minute. Yeah, that was kind of weird. But OK, he's a good show. <laughs> So <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know. It was kind of funny that he said, don't move a muscle. I'm coming back to help you, Victor. That was, that was pretty cool because he, he, he can't move a muscle. So he's being transported to the kids charity auction. They think he's actually a sculpture, even though one of his eyes actually is revealed. So when it came to those moving them, I kind of have to admit, they would at least say it's pretty weird. There's a human eye in here. And like, whoa, 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 human eye. Yeah, and they're like, they'll break it. And like, oh, my gosh, there's a kid in here. And he wants like a little freedom. But, of course, Kisho. And for the sake of having something funny, they didn't do it. And the freaking adults are idiots. So, okay, sure. So, anyways, the Rangers go and fight the monster that apparently happens at lunchtime. Thank goodness there is no Troy because Troy would be like, no, we got to stay in school first. School, then we go after school to fight the monster. <laughs> yeah, screw you, Troy. But anyways, the Rangers went to go to fight a monster. Aiden was already there fighting him. And this is where Japanime was telling a good idea. The fact of Levi didn't have to go to high school. You didn't have to make it so that, oh, yeah, I'll have to go to high school. It's like, yeah, mm. This could actually have been Levi and freaking Aiden both fighting together, you know? That would have been pretty cool. And, well, you could have had more tension. The fact of, well, the ending, let's, I'll talk about, now. Nah, I can't talk about it now. I'll just say Levi and Aiden have something in common. And it would have been pretty cool where they actually eyeballed each other and said, you know what? I think I recognize you from somewhere. And Aiden's like, oh, really? No, I don't recognize you. And he's lying, of course, but whatever. Anyways. So it's just the minions, no monster. The monster apparently is hiding, planning to poison one of them. And they chose Levi. The audience got to choose one. And Brody actually dodged in front of him like a bodyguard and took the poison for him. And Lady Odious did a bargaining move, kind of like Goldar. Except the thing is, is that with Goldar getting the power coins, it was more the fact of they stole their families. Yeah, the parents got freaking jacked. <laughs> and <laughs> this guy, yeah, the thing is that Brody doesn't have family. So, um, yeah, there's really nothing there. But anyways, the, the power stars for the antidote. That is the bargain. So they go to high school and they go into the base and Aiden gets to tag along in the base. Even though I'm like, Mick, I thought you just said, no, he doesn't get to go check out the base. And here you are. He's in the base. Good job, Mick. Good job. Aiden says, give them the power stars. That was kind of what's going on here. Even though you could say, yeah, he was concerned about Brody. He's his brother. He just came back and now he's poisoned, maybe about to be dead. And well, of course, Aiden still is gun ho about giving Lady Odious the power stars. And well, some actually came with the idea of let's make copies of them. Let's give them copies of them so we could actually dupe them and get the antidote. So that's what Levi and Haley actually do. So they grab the power stars and then they are going to clone them and stage it like they actually have the real power stars. Meanwhile, Monty is looking for Victor. And of course, the baking room is completely empty. Oh, no. Meanwhile, back with Haley and Levi, who are actually in the baking. Actually, they both were in the baking thing. And Monty came in and was like, oh, my God. Yeah, all that. So anyways, Haley and Brody were actually in there while Monty was looking for him. Brody got out while they were actually going to do the drop off. And well, 
they went with he went with Haley and Levi. So they are not in the forest. Actually, no, they're in the forest when the trade happens, and the bad guys were so happy when they actually got the power stars. It's like, yay! But sadly, the melting started. <laughs> yeah, the chocolate melted. But at least the good news is the antidote is real. And well, everyone else came and said, Oh my gosh, you really took the power stars and gave it to them? Oh my god. It's like, hmm. And it's kind of weird how none of them actually just went like risk communicators saying, Hey guys, calm down. We're faking a drop off. It's like it's easy. You guys have risk communicators. It's like, it could have been easy that one of you would just step out and said something. Then whatever, whatever, man, whatever. So anyways, yeah, chocolate power stars, they melted. <laughs> they gave the original power stars back to the Rangers and well, Aiden checked on Brody then <laughs> treachery so it's rangers versus toxicity while brody tried to go and confront lady odious but of course she left yeah she left while the minions attacked so yeah anyways levi got a little bit beat and then i'm like i remember this episode this episode is exactly the same but it's different yeah different stuff happened i think and they're at a playground for some reason. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I definitely remember this episode. I vaguely remember it. The Gold Ranger and Blue Ranger teamed up. And in the original one, it would have been better because, well, the messed up part is like the original one, if they would have went with it, they can't do it because the Blue Ranger is a completely different character than the original Blue Ranger. So, yeah, the Gold Ranger and the Blue Ranger had tension in the original one. But this one. The Blue Ranger is very, very relaxed, so it wouldn't have never worked. So it is amazing teamwork that just happened. Well, it's a little bit odd, but hey, sure. Okay, why not? And then all of a sudden, a snapshot. <laughs> Do I need to say anything about Levi taking this picture of the, of the monster going down? No. I have a video. Show that card. There it is. I have a video already talking about that. Go ahead and enjoy. I, I'm i not going to talk about it anymore. So I think it was pretty cool that the two Zords actually get to fight them. The two humanized Zords get to actually fight this monster. The others got to join in eventually. And then Mega Zords and then the Buzzsaw Saber is out. No, it's called the Ninja Master Blade. Buzzsaw Saber. That's what I'm calling it. Buzzsaw Saber. Screw your Ninja Master Blade. It's a Buzzsaw Saber unless they stop that. <laughs> but they're not. And oh my gosh, it's crazy. The monster screamed when <laughs> she got knocked out. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. That was hilarious. That was the first time ever I laughed when a monster got knocked a freak out. And it wasn't supposed to be funny. <laughs> That was the first time ever. Anyways, it's kind of funny that the Rare Ranger said, the show's over. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, the show is practically over. We just have this last thing, and then we can click the next channel. So, yeah, they are trying to chocolate out the kids and the Rangers. I don't think there was any other high schoolers. That was weird. It's like, yeah, no other high schoolers, just the main characters. That's pretty weird. But they did get a bunch of kids. That's bull crap. I'm sorry. That's bull crap. So you're able to get a bunch of kids, but you could not do Tokuger. I'm done. I'm I'm not gonna even touch this topic. I'm I'm sorry. This, this is stupid. You guys are jerks. I'm out. Okay, I'm out. But anyways, yeah. So Aiden actually gets an apology from Haley and Levi, saying, "Oh well, you were just showing off. You weren't. There was no foul. There was no meaning of anything. And well." Yeah, he's like, I'll take it easy on you next time, Levi. And that was, that was funny. That was that was a nice moment. And <laughs> then all of a sudden, we have a cutaway of Aiden talk about what he learned. The fact of, yeah, it's just the freaking, <laughs> the freaking lesson of the day. My gosh. And then Monty was looking for Victor and then alt the reveal that the main chocolate sculpture that is so awesome was Victor and the kids was just running straight to Victor so they can have that chocolate that is laced with glue I wonder how messed up is it eating paste I think it's bad because come on even kids that was three years old or four years old was like don't do that don't do that yeah so 
chocolate laced with glue. Well, that at least that's a step down for what China did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so Victor had no choice but to actually rock himself back and forth so he can get freedom. That's what he did. He's rocking back and forth so he can fall back. Everyone's like, what the frick? And then all of a sudden, as soon as he's like, ah, the kids are like scared and run for it. Funny. And of course, the last bit. It turns out that Lady Odious has Aiden under her control. Is she mind controlling him? We're not sure. We're definitely not sure of that. I think it's it's weird. It, we don't. I don't see anything where it's like, oh, mind control. And he seems too ooh, to actually be like following her, following her orders and everything. It's like, yeah, I don't really get it. So hopefully he actually is mind controlled. And that's what really is going on. If not, and he's actually doing it of his own free will, then I really don't understand. But OK, fine. Whatever you want, man. Better make it a good story, though. That's all I have to say. So, yeah, there we go. That's the whole entire episode. And. Yeah. Ninja's deal. <laughs>